Got to go to North Carolina to find who I would argue was the biggest star and um, biggest winner from Super Tuesday outside of Donald Trump, of course. And that is a man named Mark Robinson. Uh, I kind of was just reading about him last night after he won the nomination to be the uh, Republican nominee for governor in North Carolina. Now, uh, Mark Robinson is a black man who grew up as the second youngest of 10 children. He's got an amazing story and just kind of reading about him and his background uh, last night. Yeah. You know, I was thinking I'd heard of the guy and I only remember stuff because former Chiefs players with similar names. And I was thinking this guy's been listed as somewhat of a rising star, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. But last night when he became the nominee, that was really his breaking out party. Um, on, on progress and on track. His parents relied on government assistance to support their 10 kids. He was the second youngest. His father was an alcoholic and abusive towards his mother. Um, he wrote here in his autobiography, We Are the Majority, quote, Even as a child, I felt the imbalance, the wrongness of it. At an early age, I began to think of the world in terms of what is fair or unfair, right or wrong. Um, and he got into politics over the last few years or so, uh, city council, uh, you know, back in 2018. And then he quickly rose the ranks and became a statewide figure. In 2020, he ran for lieutenant governor and his victory made him the first black person in North Carolina to hold the office. And now he's got a great chance to be the governor. And this video of Mark Robinson from a speech at a, a church a couple of years back, has gone viral in the wake of his victory last night. And take a listen to Mark Robinson, a black man who grew up with a very difficult situation, second youngest of 10 kids, abusive father towards his mother, government assistance, speaking um, in a black church in the last couple of years, the lieutenant governor hoping to be the governor down in North Carolina. Here's something else I'm not supposed to say. Ain't but two genders. Two genders. Ain't but two. Ain't nothing but men and women. And I can already see WRL out there. They got their licking their pencils around, trying to write fierce as they can. Get every word of this here. Get every word of this. You can go to the doctor and get cut up. You can go down to the dress shop and get made up. You can go down there and get drugged up. But at the end of the day, you were just a drugged up, dressed up, made up, cut up, man or woman. You ain't changed what God put in you, that DNA. You can't transcend God's creation. I don't care how hard you try. The transgender movement in this country, if there's a movement in this country that is demonic and that is full of anti the spirit of antichrist, it is the transgender movement. It's time for grown-ups and time for Christians to start standing up and being unafraid to tell the truth. Come after me if you want to. I don't care. You want my head? Here it is right here. Come on, come get it. I don't care because it's time for us to stand up. And I'm not afraid to stand up and tell the truth about that issue. They're dragging our kids down into the pit of hell, trying to teach them that mess in our schools. Tell you like this, that ain't got no place at no school. Two plus two don't equal transgender. It equals four. We need to get back to teaching them how to read. Instead of teaching them how to go to hell. Yeah, I said it and I mean it. Mark Robinson, everybody. Yeah, he's got an opinion. Yeah, he's got something Some, to say. Right? I mean, tell me where you're finding that level of pizzazz, energy, fire, anywhere else in the party right now. And I'll include Donald Trump in that. That guy is uh, the nominee for the Republican Party in North Carolina to be the next governor. 
Now, of course, the hit pieces against him have already come out since he won the nomination last night. New York Times uh, writes here in a five-parter, who is Mark Robinson? He has long held anti-LGBTQ views. Of course. I mean, the guy literally, you know, that's his most famous speech from a couple of years ago. And uh, because he says there's men and there's women, no matter how you slice it and dice it, literally and figuratively, there are men and there are women. And because of that, the New York Times has a couple paragraphs here saying he has long held anti-LGBTQ views. Huh. I only heard T addressed in that alphabet soup. Well, that's interesting too, right? Isn't it? Yeah. They write here, um, in part, since gaining a political platform, and even before that on his personal Facebook page, Mr. Robinson has hurled disparaging remarks towards the community, rooting his attacks in his Christian faith. In February, Mr. Robinson said, um, where is it here? Do-do-do-do. He says that it makes him sick to see a church flying the rainbow flag. He also told a congregation there's no reason anybody anywhere in America should be telling any child about transgenderism. Well, why is that wrong? Even if you're someone who's like in favor of it, how could you make the case that keeping that away from children is anything but wrong? Even if you think, hey, for adults, whatever, but for kids, that's somehow anti-LGBTQIA plus exclamation point division sign, whatever. How? Based on what? It's what we call, and we used to call until like three years ago, common sense, decency, treating children differently from adults. Last night, uh, uh, Huffington Post Drop this piece. Just in. Mark Robinson, a conspiracy theorist known for his incendiary rhetoric, is projected to be North Carolina's GOP nominee for governor. See, it's guys like Mark Robinson that really scare the crap out of him. It's guys like Mark Robinson. From his background, second youngest to 10 kids. Poverty. Picked himself up. Living the American dream, looking to share that message with the people of North Carolina in his case. I mean, you know, I play that clip for you because it's powerful, but I'm sure his message is going to be much more about, uh, you know, how policies that allow Americans to thrive are the best policies to see the most success. Not everybody succeeding. That's impossible in a free market, but allowing the most people who want to work to succeed. I'm sure that's going to be the bulk of his messaging. And a guy like Mark Robinson telling that story is not one that the Huffington Post and the New York Times want to hear. Because it upends the nonsense that they have been selling for decades. That you can't, a guy like Mark Robinson has no chance without the government. And Mark Robinson is living proof that that is not accurate. 